four years with my Craftsman T210. These are now called the T2200. And when I bought this, people said MTD junk. It's not going to make it past the first year without a failure, much less make it two or three years. Well, here we are. Year number four, and it's working fine up to this point. Though a couple of things have changed. For instance, I normally start all my gas-powered stuff. Scooters and all, once a month during the winter. This will be my first winter where this mower sat untouched for three plus months. I did have it hooked to my Sears Die Hard Platinum Maintainer, though. I think these are made by Schumacher. I'll link an identical one down in the description. That's an affiliate link, by the way. This has helped me get three plus years out of a mower battery that some people don't get a year out of. Side quest. I had a viewer ask me to show my maintainer setup. Well, you just saw the maintainer. Again, I'll link it down in the description, affiliate link. They come with an adapter that I wired to the leads on the battery. It's a standard adapter. Additional ones can be purchased. I'll also link those in the descriptions. I routed this with zip ties down the wire loom because that's where a lot of the wires went to the battery anyway. You can see the negative lead there. I just black to black and red to redded it. For the red though, I worked it inside the cap. It can be done, it's a tight fit. I'll show that in another video. For now, this is the setup. I hope that helps you out. So far, four years out of this battery. A lot of people have these factory batteries not make it through the first season. I charged mine before the first use and I've maintained it since. I think that's the key. And by the way, that date, April 21, I wondered what that was, and now four years into ownership, I finally read the text above it, and it says that if it's not put into use by that date, to charge it before the first use. Makes sense now. I was always a bit confused because, again, I purchased this in the spring of 2020. Before we see if the battery's going to start it this year, I need to finish undressing the mower from its fall configuration. In my last leaf mulching, which was before Christmas, I didn't clean the mower as I usually do. Just a quick blast from the leaf blower. And I also left the mulch plug on. If there's one weakness to this mower, it's the mulch plug. It's a total joke. This is my, I think, third one of these, and this one's an aftermarket. They seem to last longer than the factory plugs. My blades from last year, I usually use gator blades, though through an Amazon mix-up, I ended up with copperhead blades. Slightly thinner than gators, but they performed well for me, though I do see a slight chipping on the edge of this one. No worries, I'll be replacing it anyway in my spring oil change and season prep. Looking at the underside of the deck, not bad, considering I didn't do any washing on this after that last mulching, though it was all dry leaves and dust, and a lone leaf hanging in there by the spindle. I'm also often asked about my chute holder upper. That's the support brace that came with the chute in the original packaging for the mower when they delivered mine. It had that and a few other things. It's been a good thing to have. Very handy, especially when it's parked here in the shed. It frees up space. We're about to get there. Checks that I do before I start, especially when the mower is set up like this. Now see, I didn't clean this. I told you so. Look at that dust. That's normally not there. I think I did clean out the fan area with a leaf blower though. That's, you know, a critical part. Cooling the engine and all. One other check or two other checks I do. First, I look at the gas tank. Make sure there's gas still in there. And second, I always pull out my dipstick, not only to make sure there's oil in there, but that it's the level it should be. If it's not, and my gas tank is lower, I know that something's happened and it's flowed into the engine. Oh, yeah, I gotta clean that up. But it looks like I'm all good. I don't expect any problems. I use non-ethanol gas, and I do keep that battery maintainer on there. But I do wanna point out something here. When I turn on this ignition, 11.1 volts, that's actually a lie. For reasons unknown and only when it's been sitting, that gauge will show one volt below what the battery actually is. Now, once everything's been in use, it will report accurately. Now, I don't know why, I just know that's the way it is. Still, 12.1, 12.2, the battery's getting long in the tooth, but it should get me going today. Here's a look at the total accumulated hours on this mower. Again, that's all trouble-free and on the original belt. A second thing to point out, you're going to hear it turn over a couple of bumps, actually. Normally, I move the choke all the way to the top, I start the crank, and then I move the choke down and it starts right up. But I'm filming with one hand and it takes two hands to do that. You're also going to see some dust pop up here. That's not smoke from the engine, that's dust off the shed floor.
Yeah, she's running good, and that's with three plus months of sitting. I am going to need more fuel than what's in this tank, at least probably. This is a first cut, and it's only some spriggly weeds in the back and a little bit of growth in the front. Still, I'm not in the mood to make the walk of shame with a gas can in hand. And I'm going to fill this with my five-gallon no-spill can. I don't know what year it is that I'm using this. I think about the seventh or so. I'm a fan of no-spill, and I purchased these with my own money. I think I have three of them. My father has a couple. We love them. Especially, I like this five-gallon. It has two handles, one on the back, one on the top. Well, technically three if you count the one on the spout. Yeah, these are good cans. I'm a no-spill fan. And yes, I did just fuel with a running engine. Do not attempt. I was in a time crunch. I needed to film this, and I only had an hour before I had something to do. And it's going to rain the next day. It's showtime. The mow is a go. Max throttle. Engage the blades. Everything sounds good. Set the deck height, and we're ready. Probably not going to be the best mowing footage here. Most of this is just early growth. Most of it is in my front yard. This is just weeds in the back and sticks and that's another difference between year one and year four especially with blades i'm going to be soon replacing i don't worry about picking up the sticks i just pulverize everything she still cuts like a champ and again this is the original belt that i'm using you didn't hear it squeal when it started up because it's still working great After a quick cut, a quick deck wash. I'm getting rid of the fall dust and anything else that I added from this muck. Let me say, anyone that thinks this isn't a good idea needs to look at how much green muck is coming out. That's not algae in the upper right hand corner there on the concrete. That's grass. That's grass that was on the deck, on the underside of the deck. And here, look at the deck lip. You see that green, it's slowly oozing out and that was all on the inside. A look at the other side, even more revealing. This was at the start, brown and green coming out, and after just a few minutes, clear. Total runtime after this quick cut, 109.2 hours. We'll see what I add to it this season. That's my start to 2024's mowing season after three months of sitting. I look forward to another great mowing year with this Craftsman T210, now called the T2200. And for 2024, they've upped the engine in these, which is a good thing considering they're $1,000 more. And we'll talk about that in another video. That's it for this one. Comment if you have any thoughts or if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.